are joined here today with Michelle Yanahan, who is an organizational change management expert, coach, consultant, and also an AMA facilitator. Uh, Michelle, thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you, Dorothy. I'm thrilled to be here and back again with AMA for this great conversation. I don't think it could be any more timely given what's happening in our world. Exactly. And today we're going to focus on the biggest part of change management for me is that communication linchpin because when we're talking about how to manage change, communication lives so many places in that and part of and one of the most important indicators of successful change management is communication and looking at how we do that in a virtual setting with so many changes happening, how do we communicate those changes successfully and appropriately to whoever it is that we need to work with? Absolutely. I, I think it's a great topic. And again, couldn't couldn't be any more timely. So um, Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, go, go on. Go, go, go on. Ahead, go on no, Dorothy, I was just going to jump ahead here and say, you know, certainly in the virtual setting, um, you know, it, it's not the same as communicating in person. And so I'd love to have a dialogue with you about what I'm seeing as some of the challenges and or opportunities for communicating in a virtual setting. Exactly where I was leading, Michelle. I think we're all on the same track. So what are some of those challenges that you're seeing? And, and then what are some opportunities that we can, can really take away with from what's yeah, happening? So when, yeah, thanks, Dorothy. So when we think about change, change is really based on human behavior and our human connections, those social connections. And when you think about that, both communication and engagement, and I'm going to differentiate those, play a critical role in fostering um, change. So when we consider communication, think about kind of push-pull communication. Anywhere from 70 to 93 percent of communication comes through nonverbal behaviors, which we can all see is really hard or if not next to impossible to cue into when we're communicating within a virtual setting. And if we think about nonverbals, I'm speaking about facial expressions and eye contact, body language, tone of voice, choice of those words we use. And we use body language to repeat, contradict, substitute, complement, or accent the spoken word. So now that things are virtual, we're losing some of that nonverbal. It's, it's next to impossible, but not impossible, to kind of pick up on those cues. But I do have some ways we can do that. The other big challenge that I'm seeing in driving change using virtual communication is this idea of engagement. And really, what is engagement and how is it needed for change? I differentiate engagement from communication in that communication is push-pull, sender-receiver, message feedback loop, what you might be accustomed to. Commu engagement is really trusted relationships we have with others, again, those human connections where we share information and there's an emotional component or an emotional connection. And when we share information, using engagement with that emotional connection, it has a lot more bearing on how we become aware, how we understand, and how we're propelled to action. And if you think about this, Dorothy, if you receive a communication from me about a new system launching, and this is the first time you've ever seen my name, and you don't know me or what impact it has on you, think about getting that same communication from your trusted coworker or peer that you sit beside and have worked with for years. You have a relationship, you have an emotional connection. They can tell you stories of that they've gone through this change, what they think about it, their experiences, and it's really going to connect more with you. It's going to resonate more. It has that emotional connection that these engagement opportunities require. And so we need to maintain our social connections despite being in a virtual world. So we need both communication and engagement for change. And again, both of those, I believe, represent some challenges given where we are. Not impossible, though. And throughout our conversation, I'm sure we'll get to kind of what's your best move uh, to move these forward? How do you move communications and engagement forward in this type of a virtual world? 
Great, Michelle. Thank you so much for that. And uh, I love the part of trust because I think such an important piece in being in a virtual setting now is how to still establish and build trust with your colleagues, with your direct reports. And when you are looking at you know, receiving communications for something that's going to impact you, of something that's new, you want to also make sure that someone understands you know, maybe what you're good at, maybe what you're not good at, where you may need some help. And trust is so important in that to be able to go forward with confidence and not that resistance to change that we so often see. Yeah, and I think, I think again, given where we are virtually, it's a lot easier to resist change, no, go, not go along with things, and, and kind of, you know, um, because we don't see people. So again, that idea of, and, and again, we'll, we'll get to this, but some ideas about how we successfully communicate change during this time. One is, you know, we really need to be communicating more. Um, in a lot of different ways and make sure, again, we're connecting in with that human component. Because I know um, the my clients and the folks I work with, um, even my coworkers and peers, you know, we're all feeling a bit isolated during this time. So it's really important um, change and, and just communication in general that we're staying connected in. Great. So some other tips maybe to think about in terms of how we successfully communicate change. And some of these, I would say, change in kind of a normal, uh, if you will, uh, time. But I'm going to put a little bit of a spin on them or an up on them, given where we are um, with our health crisis and, and uh, kind of the workplace change that we're going through. So certainly for change, we're always looking to communicate early and often, as early as possible and as much as possible. And repeating key messages is critically important. And in normal times, I would say repeating key messages five to seven times in a variety of ways is kind of my standard rule. But I think, again, given where we are um, and this idea that people are feeling kind of isolated and need that personal social connection, I would up the bar on that. I would say key messages need to be repeated more than that and reinforced and encouraged. Uh, certainly using different ways to communicate. You know, some of our old ways of communication when we were in the office face-to-face -face are no longer available to us. So what are all the different ways virtually, uh, by telephone, you know, what can we use? And let's use some variety, some creativity, different ways to communicate. If we simply rely on email, the average American worker pre-COVID got 125 emails a day. And so I can only guess, I know what I'm seeing on, on my desktop, you know, that number has, has gone up tremendously given, you know, that we're missing that communication component of face-to-face. -face. And so we want to use other things in other ways other than just email to communicate. So we want to think kind of outside the box and leverage all those great virtual tools that our organizations have invested in. We want to think about how do we build more regular ways for open communication? You know, maybe you have a meeting with your boss once a week and, and during non-COVID time, meeting once a week one-on-one -on -one was just fine. Um, but I think, again, under the guise of we need to really enhance and maintain those social connections, we need to look at building more regular ways for open communication. And that can be at the leadership level, but not necessarily. It can be at the peer-to-peer -peer level, too. You know, again, I think it's critically important that we remain connected, we keep our teams intact, and the only way we do that, again, is by having that connection. The productivity goes with that. Another thing, and it sounds quite simple, but I think it's probably one of the most undervalued uh, ideas or thoughts or tips when communicating, and again, I'm thinking in these unprecedented times, this is even more critical for folks is this idea of actively listening to what people are saying. Actively listening. Really cueing in, you know, kind of um, drowning out the other things around us, which given now that most of us are at home and, you know, have our, our children, our parents, our pets, you know, our husbands and spouses and partners with us, you know, 24 hours a day now, is, is quite difficult to do, much more difficult than when we're in an office setting but really actively listening to people, kind of trying to tune out, tune into what they're saying, think about what they're saying prior to jumping forward with your next thought. 
Um, I think it's critically important for communication and change, but also given, again, COVID, that we really are queuing in and listening to people. And, and one of the ways we can do that is by asking probing questions. I mentioned when we talked about some of the challenges that we're losing some of that 50 to 73% of body language. You know, even if we're seeing people on Zoom, similar to what we're seeing people on in the webinar here today, you know, we're seeing a little tiny picture of people and we're probably not queuing in enough to, you know, what everybody's doing in terms of their eye contact and some of their body language and mannerisms. So it's important that we are asking probing questions to people, reaching out to individuals by name, you know, as we're communicating and making sure that they're hearing us, they're understanding, they're building energy, enthusiasm, excitement, curiosity around the change. We're helping them, supporting them. I think that's so important. Um, we want to open dialogue. And, and with that probing question, we're also able to kind of look at that change resistance that you, man you mentioned, Dorothy, that again, I think is somewhat kind of buried or hidden now that we can't see people face to face and see some of that kind of real time body language. So the only way to really draw that out is to connect with people and ask probing questions and make more opportunities to go one-on-one -on -one and in small groups where people feel comfortable sharing that. And that kind of goes back again to that trust. Another thing that I would highly recommend for communication uh, in change in general, but also uh, amp the bar up on this one during this time period is positives. I think all too often while people are going through change, Organizations don't acknowledge the positive until the end of a project, the end of initiative. Something happens, we get a great metric, something turns over. And really, change is about the journey. It's a journey, not a sprint. And that we really need to be recognizing, rewarding, acknowledging, reinforcing, encouraging people along the journey. Not just when some very large key milestone is hit. We'll celebrate that too. But how about celebrating all the great small steps that are happening along the journey? By celebrating those great small steps, we're propelling more steps forward. And so people need to know that their efforts are being recognized and that maybe even if we haven't reached that long-term milestone, that great metric or whatever we're trying to do, that we're moving on the right path along the journey. And we recognize and acknowledge all the good work that's being done. The final thing that I would say here in terms of a tip for successfully communicating change, communicating change uh, kind of goes back to engagement and those trusted relationships and connections that we have. And this extends it a bit further and is around how in a virtual world do we create opportunities for people to not only connect and engage together, but connect and engage together on change. So let's say we have a new system change that's occurring. You know, can we give people, you know, that system to play with, you know, as a demo early and let them be in a breakout room where they can talk? You know, how do we build, and I understand we have to be creative and use the tools that we have at our fingertips from our organizations, but how can we build experiences? Maybe it's just shooting a quick video with your iPhone or your phone. I mean, sharing that out so people can really feel like they're touching into the change well before it is, you know, on their desk and they have to use it. How do we really get their hands on it as best we can? And again, that could be a video. It could be showing somebody screenshots. It could be, you know, having somebody jump on a call with you and you walking through something. You know, it doesn't have to be this elaborate, you know, we've got this virtual road show that you can jump into and touch and feel everything. You know, this can be done at a very kind of simple and small scale. Take videos and post them. You know, set time with your coworker or colleague to walk through something all the way up to the large scale of, you know, there's this virtual road show we can go in and kind of pseudo experience everything. So I think there's something for everybody in that. And I think the other thing about communicating change in general, but also in the unprecedented times, is be creative. You know, think outside the box. Um, think of things that you can do, again, with the tools that are available to you at your fingertips, you know, that, that are a little bit different, that cut through some of all the communication that's occurring.
So again, just a, a couple, maybe eight or ten tips there on successfully communicating change. Um, you know, in general, but also upping our bar given that we're in a virtual world. That's great, Michelle. And I like thinking outside the box because I like to think of it as a way to have fun. Have a little fun with it. With it. Give people some variety with what they're doing. And I feel like everything and all those tips fit into um, the, the same sort of results that you're building that engagement, you're building that trust. Active Absolutely. listening is always so important when we're talking about communicating uh, and, and really looking at you know, how someone is feeling, how they are looking to move forward, develop themselves, how they're going to be feeling about any change that is coming through and what you can do as a mentor, a colleague, a manager, a leader, whatever role that you're in, um, to ensure that someone feels supported as well. Absolutely. And along that same topic, um, you know, I was mentioning, you know, kind of upping our bar on virtual. And I think, um, although we need to do that, I think that we need to be cognizant that people are experiencing virtual fatigue. And I have a couple thoughts or strategies around how we better manage communication and change given we're in a virtual world, but we're over kind of we're oversaturated, I would say, with some of the virtual meetings and the virtual fatigue. So how do we break through some of that in addition to the tips um, that I provided? I think, you know, one of the things I would say is we need to make it personal. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to use some buzzwords here, but then fill in the blanks. Um, and that is when we're creating virtual meetings, whether it's about change, whether it's about training, or kind of anything um, during this time, I think we need to allow people some personal time to check in with one another on the front end or back end of our work meetings. You know, everything, um, you know, we, again, we want to build and maintain that social connection. So I think it's important to allow for some personal check-in time to encourage those connections, that teamwork, um, that organizational poll that we all have together to continue. And you know, that includes using people's names. I mean, simple things like getting on a call and saying, Dorothy, what do you think about that? Right? If, um, and also just this idea around allowing some buffer time between virtual meetings, whether they're for change or not. Right? I think we're all jumping from one meeting to the next. And really when we do that, and when we don't allow pers a little bit of personal time for check-in with our teams, Again, we're losing some of that connection, that emotional pull, which is just so very important to our threat of our organization, but also how we drive innovation and change through our organization. So I would allow for some personal time, you know, recognize the personal, make it a little bit personal. Um, certainly on virtual communication, make people's voices heard. Right? Let them voice out or chat or use a whiteboard or annotate. Right? Use some of, again, whatever tools you have in your organization to allow people to get involved and engage. So important for change to get their voices heard, but also so important to build, continue to build that connection, that emotional engagement, keep teams together, keep productivity high. We talked about you know, this idea of being creative. Um, and you know, kind of thinking outside the box. And again, here, you know, in a virtual world, use imagery, use music like we did on the front end of this call. Use video, use polls. Allow people to be creative, right? Bring their creative, uh, creative flair to the different meetings, you know. And again, so not all of our virtual meetings about change or otherwise kind of erode and feel exactly the same. Kind of break through. You know some of some of that monotony. You know, um, you know what's the word of the day? You know, what spirit animal are you feeling like today? You know that stuff sounds a little corny, but I think when you're sitting in a series of meetings and you're communicating all day long, some of that little break to laugh, think it's silly, and do that emotional connection is just so critical to keep our teams engaged, keep us engaged, keep our organization moving forward. And around that, you know, how do we keep connecting? Use those breakout rooms, use exercises, you know, allow people again to be engaged in different ways. Excuse me, so it's not just, you know, um, it's not just voiceover, you know, that we're actually having people do things where possible and really contribute. And this idea of being able to share information, 
virtually. Um, I think it's so critical um, when we are having any kind of virtual meeting that we can record them if possible and make them available for people. That we document or have key messages and discussion points and action items available off the back. Again, this idea of sharing all the great things that are happening virtually because people, again, are jumping from meeting to meeting and we just don't want them to, to miss out. And I think also via recording, you can grab some of that that tone of voice and some of those things that maybe um, you would see if you were face-to-face -face via body language. So, so critically important for virtual fatigue to make it personal, get voices heard, be creative, keep people connecting, and, and share. I think those are some, some virtual fatigue words of wisdom about how you can use these great technologies we have and really excel with them and keep your team connected, keep your organization moving forward. Great. Yeah, and I think that's something that really has changed is this virtual fatigue that we have never really experienced so much before. So taking those half-hour breaks or having a meeting that you're not dreading going to, that you feel like you can just kind of relax a little and take in any information, but also feel connected feel like you're being heard. I feel like so much of this is making sure that you feel like you have some kind of input. Maybe you do, maybe maybe not, but at least feeling like you do. Absolutely, 100%. Great. So I think there are a couple best practices beyond kind of um, what I've said already around some tips mm -hmm. for communicating and kind of dealing with virtual fatigue that I would be remiss if I didn't put into our mm -hmm. conversation. Okay. Um, so, you know, AMA spends a lot, a lot of time focused on managers and leaders, and we've got a lot of great courseware for managers and leaders um, around this topic and many other great topics. Um, but I think it's important during this time, and particularly, um, and I'll put it under the guise of change communication, because I really do look at the COVID transition as a change is that managers and leaders um, really need to also be communicating the safety net. And what I'll, what I'll describe the safety net as is how will be employees be supported through change? And again, you could, you could use the word change here and say COVID, the COVID transition. So how will employees be supported? So as an employee, I should be listening for my manager or leader to advise me how they're going to be supporting me through the change and transition what I can expect from my manager or leader in terms of how often we'll be communicating, how we're going to up the bar on this virtual communication and keep our connections strong, where we can find additional support on the change or transition, and really make it visible about the, the positive reinforcement for the change and the successes we're having. And again, you could use the change and put the COVID transition in there and it would work just fine. I think it's a manager and leader's role to also prepare that safety net or make that safety net available for employees as they return to work in whatever the new workplace is. So creating a safety net and acknowledging the uncertainty or the unprecedented time or the uncertainty of change slash transition. Um, certainly when we think about COVID, um, and any change, um, we could say, you know, change is unknown and that creates some difficulty. Um, change is challenging, it's uncertain, and that creates, you know, it makes it hard, makes it per perceived to be as hard. But the manager and leader can really let the team know, the individuals know, that, you know, we're learning as we go. We need to be a bit flexible and adaptable. Um, with COVID and any change, but we are learning as we go. And we will work as a team, the power of our team and the structure and what has not changed. We will take comfort in that and that will help guide us through. So the power of working as a team and that employee safety and comfort are our highest priority. And again, you could take this and say, kind of this is a standard, you know, standard bullet point for a manager leader in any type of change, but also critically important, you know, where we are with a new workplace. And certainly, we value employee contribution. I had that as one of my talking points previously, and I'm bringing that up here again under the guise of managers and leaders. So I think in addition to all the kind of strategies that we've talked about for managing and communicating change, the opportunities with virtual, 
um, the challenges slash opportunities. Managers and leaders can also help contribute to communicating the safety net as well as acknowledging the uncertainty of change, but this idea that we will work as a team, we will learn and grow, and we can take comfort in that not everything is changing, that there is structure that we can pull from, and we will begin, begin, begin and continue to grab onto that. So those are some best practices for managers and leaders that I would add to some of the other tips and tricks we've talked about for communicating with change all times but virtually and, and especially during kind of where we are in the workplace today. Great, Michelle. Thank you. And I, I love that. I like thinking of it as an all in mentality. We're all in this together. Um, you know, things may change. And that's something that I use as myself as a manager is making sure that I give all in the information that I have up front, but also being honest and saying things may change, be flexible, be agile. And we're all in this together. So uh, great, great tips, great tips. So while we're talking about communication change, communicating change, we have a whole diff, um, change management process and communicating is just one piece of that. So maybe we can go into a little bit of what else change management encompasses and, and how cha communication in, in that change management process fits in. Absolutely. Um, I love this model. Um, I'm going to start with evaluating impact, and that's all around understanding the impact of the change. So the delta between where we are today, current state, and where we're going in the future state, and that impact could include systems, data, people impacts, process impacts, market and product, and culture impacts. So evaluating impact is all, all about understanding the breadth and depth of the change. And then particularly in terms of our stakeholders who are impacted, how will they be impacted and how will they impacted, be impacted differently between stakeholder groups? So that's evaluating impact. And I always start change there, uh, understanding really, I like to say how big of a bread box this is. And from there, um, it really helps us understand our change drivers, and impact our barriers to acceptance once we understand our stakeholders. And from that impact and stakeholder assessment, communicating for change all comes down to understanding I've got these different stakeholder groups that are impacted in different ways. What are the key messages that I want to share with the different stakeholder groups to make them aware, let them know the benefits and what's in it for them, help them understand where they can get training and support, and then finally celebrating the success of or the journey forward for the change. And around that, all about managing resistance. So looking for different types of resistance, identifying those early, drawing those out, and helping manage and mitigate through those types of resistance. And closing up with buy-in and commitment. And we'll get that from leadership kind of all along the path of our process here. But the further buy-in and commitment is really about how do we take this change, put it into standard business practice and process, but make sure that it continues forward, that it sustains forward. How do we continue to make it a priority and in our leadership dialogue with our teams? So this model is really great. Um, it's got a li lot of different pieces and parts, but the way it's shown really shows you that this is a cycle and it doesn't really ever end, that yeah. um, we need to further buy in and commit to the change even once we think we're done and we have those sustainment measures or uh, success measures, we really need to continue forward. So we're building and change is a huge part of this model, but in order to kind of position change, we've got to have those upfront steps to understand you know, who's impacted, how they're impacted, and what we need to best communicate. Great, Michelle. Well, thank you. We are winding down on our time together. So is there any key takeaways that you want to share with our group before we end our uh, session today? Yeah, yeah, I would love to, Dorothy. And it's been a great conversation. Thank you again so much for the opportunity. Yes, we are communicating virtually, but I think that we can successfully manage and communicate change virtually. I don't think that just because we're not together, even though we've got some opportunities, I think it can successfully be done. And how we do that, some of the things I want to reiterate from today's session is look to communicate change of any type on a more regular interval than we would previously. Think about how can we 
plan for more regular communications, whether those are one-on-one, -on -one, small group sessions, team sessions, or large sessions. So where are those regular communication opportunities that we can create and expand upon? We want to repeat those key change messages. And again, I would go above seven times given that we're virtual. Look to repeat those messages in different ways, not just via email or via voiceover in a virtual meeting. Look to communicate those in different creative ways. Use your active listening. Now's a great time, I know I'm doing this, to say, how do I get better at active listening, especially when I've got all these distractions around me? So challenge yourself to get better at that, really, that active listening. And use probing questions not only to support active listening, but call out some of the things we would have been able to see within people via body language that we're not able to cue into so well in a virtual setting. Again, be creative. And you want to make sure during these unique times that you're really paying special attention to the human element, the human component, and connections really driving those connections, enhancing those connections. Because without those connections, which is really communication, but engagement we also need in change, you know, we'll really struggle to communicate well for change and have it resonate and help us move forward with change. For managers and leaders, again, I, need to, I need, think they need to follow the same guidance, but up their game as well, communicating elements of that safety net and acknowledging that change is uncertain uncomfortable, can be challenging, but we will move through it if we're able to be a bit flexible, adaptable, and work together, not against each other. And, and again, some of that messaging is really around the value of the employees, showing our success around remaining productive during these times, and our success forward on change. And I'm hoping with these virtual communication tips that people will be able to up their game on virtual communication and engagement and lead through change more successfully. Oh, thank you so much, Michelle. I have no doubt that anyone that has joined us today will be able to take away something that we've talked about. And I so greatly appreciate you taking the time with me today to cover this very important topic and share your insights. So thank you again.